Hey, hey, hey. I hope everybody's doing well on this lovely Monday. Can you believe that uh, summer is almost over? We're not that far away from the fall. I, I don't know about you, I'm looking forward to um, a little bit cooler temps and good weather and uh, you know that kind of stuff. You know, outside, you know, fires and grilling and you know not sweating to death as you grill. I'm looking forward to it. Hope you guys are um, enjoying what we have though uh, this day. If you want to turn um, as we're kind of waiting on everybody to get here. Um, during uh, the last couple of weeks, um, I've been just kind of revisiting some of my favorite passages and you know, things that have been underlined in my Bible for years or multiple Bibles that I've owned for years. And um, this past week, I've been uh, reading back through, you know, kind of Matthew, I don't know, I guess uh, one through six mostly, um, but really kind of focusing on Matthew six. Hey, Mom. My mom's watching. Um, Matthew 6, uh, the very end of the chapter. And I've spoken on this a number of times, but um, just wanted to, to share a few verses. And I'm going to read all the, uh, I'm going to read Matthew 6, 25 through the end. We're not really going to talk about all of it, uh, but I'm going to read the whole thing just to kind of give us a little context. This is Jesus and he is speaking to us about worry and doubt and fear, really. And he says this, he says, starting in verse 25, again, we're in Matthew 6, verse 25. It says, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is life not more important than food and the body not more important than the clothes you wear? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single day to his life? Sorry, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the fields, which are here today and gone tomorrow, are here today and tomorrow thrown in the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith, so don't worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough of its own troubles. And I know I, I've shared on this before, and you know, usually we talk about um, just the idea of God's provision in our life, um, you know, and, and that we don't need to worry about what we eat or what we wear or how things are going to be taken care of us. And, and he, Jesus goes and he tells us in depth, you know, do you look at all these things? Um, don't you understand that God um, finds you more valuable than all those? And, you know, um, it, and one of my favorite parts of, of the of the passage is, you know, listen, the pagans look for all these things. And, you know, he's saying everybody looks for these. We all need these. And he actually says, your heavenly father knows you need them. And so if he knows you need them, he needs them. Need them? Yep. Mm -hmm. He'll provide for you. But even though I talk about it, that's not really what I want to focus on today. The, I want to focus on the last couple of verses. It says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles of its own. It's one of the things that, that um, really has been sticking with me over the last week as I've just kind of read through this um, chapter over and over is not tomorrow, but today. That's what Jesus is saying. Don't focus on tomorrow, but focus on today. It says that today has enough troubles of its own. Uh, isn't that true? Um, and don't we all find that to be true each, each and every day? But what really struck me is, is that what Jesus is, is, is calling us to is, one, don't worry about all these things, but just focus on today. Be present in today. There's things that God wants to do in your life today. And if we're so consumed by tomorrow, 
and not worried about what God wants to do in our life today, you might miss it. And, and, and you might miss what God wants to do today. One thing for me that I, I've been realizing is, is that as I can focus on today and not tomorrow, what happens is that I have a lot more peace about not worrying about tomorrow, not thinking what has to be done tomorrow, not thinking about my to-do list for tomorrow or checklist for tomorrow or even for the week. But what, what does God want for me today? Simplifying things down to one day at a time. And for, you know, as the Bible tells us tomorrow is not promised that there's a lot more peace that resides and, and seeking the Lord saying, okay, what do you have for me today? But above that, um, or, or in addition to that, what I realized is that people need me to be present today. People need you to be focused on today. And this is what I mean. My kids need me to be present today, thinking about today, helping them today, and not worrying about tomorrow. They need that in their life. My wife needs me to be present today, to be uh, um, focused on today and not tomorrow. My neighbors need me to notice them today, not worry about what I have to do tomorrow. My coworkers need me to pay attention to them today. And that really is, is um, one of the things Jesus is saying here, um, at least to me through this passage of scripture, is that Jesus is asking us to be present and worried and, and, and thinking on today and what he has for us today. See, that's the best way, one of the, the, the tools and keys to having peace is focusing one day at a time, but it also is one of the things that helps you be involved in what's going on around you. Noticing what your neighbors need today, your coworkers need today, maybe your spouse or your kids or your mom and dad, whatever it might be, needs you to be present Today, Christ is calling you to worry and, and be focused on today. And I don't mean worry as far as in the fear sense of, of, of that word, but worried about what am I doing today? What is God asking me to do today? And this is what he's saying, don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow has enough worries of its own and it will take care of itself, but be focused on today. So here's my challenge for you this week. I like to leave us with a challenge every week. And, and that challenge is for us to be present in, in, in the day that the Lord has given us. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in is what the psalmist tells us. This is the day that God has given you. You are here. And what is the things that God has called you to do today? What are the, what are the things that people around you need from you today, not tomorrow? And um, I'm hoping that as you do that, that will um, take away some of, of your fear, your worry, your doubt. It'll bring more peace in your life, focusing on God, letting him work on you in this one day and knowing that all you're responsible for is today. And so um, I, I'm praying that uh, you will walk with the Lord today, that you will seek his face, you'll be still, and you'll be quiet before him and let him guide your steps that you won't worry about tomorrow and you'll let tomorrow take care of itself, just like Jesus is saying to us. Just like he is speaking to us, it says again, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough of its own troubles. Be present today. Let the Lord work in you today. Focus on today. Uh, Lord, I pray for each and every person um, that's watching this or watches it later, Lord, that you will um, help them to stay focused, Lord, that they be willing to set aside this day for you and for your purposes in their life. Lord, I pray that you would bring them peace, that you would bring them joy, and that you would pour out your favor on them. We love you guys. We hope to see you soon. Um, hope you're tuning in to all the opportunities that we have online, and we hope to see you Sunday. Don't forget Sunday, if, if um, you know, you're not quite comfortable meeting inside, but are comfortable meeting outside, we are providing um, outside uh, a TV this past week. We put it outside and streamed the service live, um, and it worked really, really well. We had a number of people um, out there, so um, if that interests you, those details will all, always they'll be on Facebook and Instagram, and then also be on our midweek update. Um, you know, about what you need to bring and what you don't. And so if that's a, a way that you can be involved and, and, and uh, come to service, that'd be awesome. We'll still keep streaming online for those of you who are at home. Just know this, we love you and we look forward to seeing you. Talk to you soon.